Hey everyone, so this is a video for how to build the interlaced polyhedra V2, the second version of the interlaced polyhedra. Um, the first thing you're going to need is an icosahedron frame, just like this one. Um, I've already done a tutorial video for how to build one of these, so you can go look at my channel and watch that video and see how, you, how to make it. Um, there's one difference. This one's a little bit smaller than the one that I made in that video. Uh, that one used rings of 26 for each of these long edge pieces. Uh, this one, however, uses rings of 24. So you can see the length of the icosahedron is only 12 magnets rather than 13. But otherwise it's exactly the same with the corner pieces and everything like that. But, so, uh, build this, and set it aside. Then you're going to need 12 of these pieces here. And you'll notice they look very similar to the, uh, small the points for the small stellated dodecahedron. Uh, they're a little bit different, though. So I'll show you how I do them. The first thing you need is to build a pentagonal bipyramid or a decahedron, which you do by getting a small pentagon, then by building a pentagon that is one ring larger, and then you build a third one that is even one ring larger still. You take the smallest one and the middle one and put them together like that. They add together like this. Then you can take this and add them together into a small uh, pentagonal bipyramid. The edge length is four on that. This outside edge is four magnets long. Then what you want to take is uh, stacked rings of 18 magnets. And you need a stack of 10 rings for every one of these pieces. And so what you do is you take them and mash them down into kind of a flat thing and take a card and cut them up and you'll have five long straight pieces then what you want to do is take each one and you see how there's this kind of lone magnet out here on the end and you want to take that off just like that and then take the pentagonal bipyramid and add this on to the side of it just like that and you want to do the same thing with the other four straight pieces Now on the last one, you may need to uh, kind of push it in a little bit to make sure that everything is contacting that center pentagon. And when you flip it around, it'll look like this. And what you need to do, let's see, my chain is getting away from me. Uh, you need to take a chain though and pull off these five outside corner magnets that are just kind of hanging out there. Just like that. Next you want to remove that uh, top pentagon. Just like that. Now you see here that on the very top there's a pentagon kind of rim here. And you wa don't want to take the corners out, you want to take the ones that are in the middle of the edges. Those five magnets. Just like that. And do it again, again, 
again and again until you have this. And you see these five magnets around here are kind of wobbly and free-floating. Then you make another small pentagon ring and you add it on top of the one that you see there so that those free-floating magnets, those five free-floating magnets, will um, hook in to the new pentagon that you just added. Just like that. And so far, this is all exactly like the piece that you did for the small stellated, small stellated dodecahedron, except for the length of the legs of the point. Now here's where it becomes a little bit more different because you need to add a spoke coming out of here. So you take a stack of uh, pentagon rings, and it doesn't really matter how long they are, but it does need to be at least like five or six long. And what you're gonna do is you're going to attach it to this center pentagon on the underside of the point. And you need to make sure that when you put it there, it's the right polarity so that it meshes into that center pentagon and it's not stacked, it's meshed. So you go ahead and put that in. Just like that. And now you wanna cut away most of it. And I like to use a little tiny piece of plastic. It's like a cut up old credit card. Um, to where you remove this whole thing except for the two rings that are uh, nearest to the end. And so you kind of slide that in and take off the excess. Oh, looks like I got an extra magnet in there. There you go, just like that. And if you are wondering why I needed all these extra pentagon rings, try putting it on with just the two and you'll see why I need it though. It's pretty much impossible. So, now that you have these, you are going to want to go back to your icosahedron frame. And these are going to add to where this pentagon ring here is going to mesh onto the uh, <clears throat> onto the uh, pentagonal corners of the icosahedron. So it's going to go on just like this. Just like that. Now, as you're adding the first three on, you'll see that they don't quite come together in the middle. And that's where you need the next part which is a, just a tiny triangle, three magnets. And you add it between these two to complete them. That is the wrong polarity. So flip it around. And add it on just like that. And generally, it's best to add that on when there's two, and then you can take the third one and put it on, like so. Now, uh, this being the first corner, we're going to want to uh, make it the bottom of the shape. So, once I even everything out here, um, we're going to want to add the next pieces on. 
although we're not going to do it to the rest of the shape yet, just to this part. And that involves these things, which are stacked rings of 18, yeah, 18 magnets. And we need 60 stacked rings. And so what you do is you take them, flat them out, cut them into long straight pieces, go figure. Right now I only need three. And what you want to do is on the underside of them, you want to take out the middle four magnets. Like that. Like that. So the middle four on the bottom side of the straight piece get taken out. And you want to do that to the other two also. And then what you want to do is take these and you're going to put them across uh, this part here, right across the middle of it. Just like that, see? And you do the same thing with the other two and they will connect in the middle. Now, right now you see the corner looks like that and you can kind of grip it on the sides here and push it together like that to round it out. And now finally the last thing you want to do for the bottom face of it is put together two stacked hexagon rings just like that and add them in a meshed alignment on top of the hexagon corner here. Of course, I got the polarity backwards. Flip it around and... There you go. Just like that. And that should create a nice uh, support for it. And you can go ahead and flip it over now. Just like that. And now what you want to do is take the uh, remaining nine of these and add them on to one on each of these corners and to uh, take those uh, small triangles like this and uh, put those in between the junctions of all of them. And I think all told you need 20 of these. You've already put one on, so you need 19 more. 